Hey guys, making another video. You guys are in for a treat. So I bought these two bolts, Bolt Pros, and in this video, we are going to convert them into one single dual motor bolt. So there's a couple of reasons for doing this. Um, believe it or not, these are actually cheap enough that, or cheap-ish, because uh, if you were to separate these two out and buy the actual components, for instance, the motor, the battery, and the controller, uh, and then some of the other controls, you're probably pretty close to around the same or more money. So the motor itself is probably like 90 to to $100. The controller maybe $30, the battery probably another 100 bucks. But here's the issue is that all of these are shipped from China. So the shipping on the motor alone is like $80. So you're looking at close to $200 for a rear uh, a motor. And then you're looking for, you know, I mean, you could probably get the controller locally and then you can get the battery uh, from China also, but also you're talking probably another hundred bucks for shipping or something like that, something crazy. Uh, hey, Turbsy, what's up, buddy? So this is actually the most, believe it or not, the most economical way in my, in my uh, opinion. So the way this bike is set up is actually very different than what most people will do. So this bike has two batteries and two actual individual controls. So I'm gonna give a walk around first, and then I'm gonna do a teardown video of one of the bikes. So after it's torn down, you're gonna see, uh, basically it's bare frame. I mean, I have two front wheels left over here. Uh, this is actually a teaser. This is a thousand watt motor. I have the controller over there. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some 3D scanning of the clam, hopefully to do a custom battery in this. And then I'm gonna have to probably machine or CNC something that fits on this wheel so a tire can go on. But that's for a different video. This is, this is already like step one in the extreme because most people don't really want to modify that, their bike that crazily. And this is already step one. And then that one's almost full custom there. So it's, that's a different video. But anyways, so I'll give you a walk around of the bike just to let you know like the features and stuff and what we're basically going to do. So we have a single, the stock motor in the rear, and then we have a stock motor in the front. So how they're controlled is they're actually two separate controllers, two separate powers, power switches. So I have front motor, you can see front motor turn on, and rear motor. So these throttles uh, use Hall effect sensors. So the, the biggest issue is when you split that signal, it doesn't necessarily uh, translate. So when I tried to actually split the signal between these two to run one single throttle, uh, it would just on off. That was it. And the biggest issue with that, aside from that, is also your front motor is probably not going to be doing as much work as your rear motor because most of the weight's on the rear. And if you have your throttle connected to one power source, once the main power source, for instance, the rear throttle, uh, the rear battery dies, it's going to stop working. So you're not gonna get any um, power at all. So what I ended up doing is, I ended up cutting down an actual stock throttle and I 3D printed this piece here, this adapter. So I removed the actual spring in this one with a Hall effect sensor because you don't want like really hard to twist throttle or resistance on this one. So this one's actually just free to move, but it's locked in by this four millimeter bolt here. Now you could use a black bolt too, I suppose, then it would be less uh, intrusive. So basically, as I turn this, both of them simultaneously turn at the same time. Uh, this grip is taped because these are actually glued on from stock. So this is really, really difficult to remove. Uh, you actually have to cut it off and the grip sizes are different. So that's seven eighths. This is 30 millimeters, which I think is one and an eighth maybe, or a little bit larger than that. So that, that's why this is janky like that. But the advantage of this is the two systems are actually completely independent. So you could run the front motor if you wanted to just by turning on the front motor, there you go. And you could run the rear motor if you wanted to by just running the rear motor. And you can run both simultaneously as you want and then both wheels will actually run. So because of this, you don't have to worry about, okay, my rear battery died, so my throttle has no power now. Even though my front battery is fine, I can't use it, right? So that's, that's why I set it up this way. The, the bike that I'm about to do, I'm not really quite sure if I'm going to run a um, 
front uh, bag like this with the battery in it or make a custom uh, bike rack on the rear. Uh, the only downside of this is it actually shifts the center of gravity higher up and the kickstand actually is now unable to keep the bike up if it's in stock, if you don't modify the kickstand because uh, it just wants to tip over. So that's why it's leaning against the box right now. So basically, I think the advantage really is uh, having dual motor, you get better traction, uh, you can do trails and stuff, you can go off-roading and you really don't have any issues here. Uh, whereas the old one used to slip I don't know how many people take these off off road, but also in the rain, it's a lot better if you do take it in the rain. All right, so we're just gonna move this out of the way and then we're going to start the teardown.